Hello and welcome to a new intro to a series that I'm going to try out. It's called an intro to the Linux terminal. This is something I've been asked about for so long now, I really have been meaning to do it, just haven't gotten around to it. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so a lot of you are actually going to be running GNOME at this point, and so the easiest way to get to the terminal on GNOME is go up to Applications, Accessories, and then click on Terminal. As you'll see here, my terminal looks a little bit different than yours probably does. Now by default, it should look something like this, where it's black text on a white background. I like mine to be green text on a black background because I used Unix way back in the days, and that's the way that it was. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm back on my green text on the black background, and you'll notice here we have a blinking cursor prompt. It's ready for us to do whatever we want to do. Now, the part before the prompt is what's really important at the moment. You'll see here it says jkey0, that's actually my username at render. Render is the name of the computer that I'm running this on. And then a colon. The colon is basically saying this is all the stuff that is impertinent, this is the user at where the user is, everything after this is going to deal with where we're actually located on the system. Now the little squiggly mark there, that's actually called a tilde, that says where we're actually located on the system at the moment. Now to understand what that actually means, you're going to have to understand the tree, the hierarchy of the Linux file system. So at the very top of the tree you've got the root, the slash, the, the very top directory all of the files on the system are contained under this directory. Now under the root you've got a whole bunch of different directories. You've got the etc directory, bin, sbin, opt, var, and home. Home is actually the most important one we're going to talk about right now. The home directory is where all of your personal user files are kept. So inside of that home directory if you have multiple user accounts you're going to have multiple home files in there. So for example on my system if I go into the home directory I will see home slash jkey0 and within that directory are actually where all of my personal files are kept including music, pictures, documents, all sorts of other fun things, whatever you want to create there. Now for the sake of making things simple, Linux actually sets it up so that your home directory is represented by a tilde. So if I'm at the terminal right now and I type in pwd, that says print working directory and it says print whatever directory I'm in, let me know exactly where I am on the system. You'll see here in the terminal we have slash home slash jkey0, so that's slash for the root forward slash home as the directory forward slash jkey0 is the subdirectory that we're in. I hope I didn't go through that too quickly. If I did, let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to try to clear all that up. Basically, you've got the root directory, you've got a bunch of directories under it, and then a bunch of directories under those. It does expand out kind of like a tree. But that's enough about that. I could make an entire video just talking about the file structure of Linux. Now, if I want to see the files that are actually contained in this directory, I type in ls. And what that does is it puts a listing out of just those files that are contained in the directory. From here you can do whatever you want to, you can browse around to other directories, you can create files, you can delete files. The, the terminal is so powerful that you can do a ton of things from it. And that's why I want people to be comfortable with it instead of being afraid of it. I know a lot of people still shy away from Linux because they're convinced you have to spend a ton of time at the terminal and they're just terrified of that thought. Well, the whole point of this is to show that the terminal is really not all that scary if you know a few simple commands. You can navigate around, you can activate services, you can do all sorts of very easy things. So now that we've listed the contents of this directory, you can actually do a full listing of the directory by doing an ls-a. That will say show all files in the directory no matter what. Now this can get kind of large. It's actually a little bit easier if you look at it in a listing format. So ls-al will actually say list it in a long format which gives you all of the information on every file in this directory. And you'll see here we've got different permissions. This is a little bit much to get into at the moment so we won't even worry about it but here's a list of all of your files. Anyone that has a dot in front of it is considered hidden in Linux so if you want to hide something put a period in front of it. But that's basically listing the directories. There's a whole lot more involved to that but basically ls to list it, ls-al to list it long and show all of the files. Now if I wanted to move into one of these other directories and see all the files that are contained in it, I could type in, for example, cd space urban terror. And actually I'm going to go ahead and hit tab on that instead. It will tab complete the rest of that directory for me. Very handy. So now cd says change directory and that changes to whatever directory you're giving it. And I'm giving it the folder name without a slash in front of it because if I put that slash there it says change to the slash root directory and then whatever directory I've given after it. So CD Urban Terror says take whatever I've got, in this case home JK0, and then put this after it. So CD Urban Terror and then LS again will take me to the contents of that Urban Terror directory. If you're curious and you want to see it actually in action, I can go into my JK0 folder, go into the Urban Terror directory, and here are a list of all those same files that were shown in the terminal. Just wanted to show you that just for convenience sake. 
Now let's say you've gone in here, you've made some changes to files, you've deleted files and whatever, and you want to get back up one directory or you want to go back to your home directory. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can either, depending on how many levels deep you are, hit CD space dot dot. The dot dot says go up one level. Not sure why that is, that's an old standard that they've been following for a long time. I'm sure there is a good reason for it though, but dot dot goes back up one level. You'll see here the tilde slash urban terror says home directory slash urban terror directory. If I hit cd dot dot, it goes back up to just the tilde. If I type pwd now again, we are back in the home directory. Now if I go deeper and deeper, cd urban terror, cd io urban terror dot app, uh, we'll go into cd contents. We'll go into CD resources, we'll go into, that's as far as we can go with this one, nice. Now you'll see we've got the home directory slash urban terror slash io urban terror dot app, contents, resources, on and on down. If I wanted to get back to my home directory from here, or if you're on any other directory on the system and you somehow got there and want to get back, you can either close out and reopen it back up, that's not exactly the most convenient way to do it, or you can just type CD. CD alone immediately takes you back to your home directory no matter what. In addition, you could probably do CD space tilde, and that would take you to the tilde, the home directory. There are so many different ways that you can do things in the terminal, it's not even funny, but it is very convenient. The only other thing I could think to cover as far as navigation would be to create and delete files and directories. So, if you want to create a file, you say touch and that will create just a plain file that can be turned into whatever you want it to be. So if I say touch uh, test.txt and then do an ls to view the contents of the directory, you'll see over here we have test.txt that just showed up. That's a plain old text file, it doesn't have anything inside of it. I'm gonna skip ahead just a little bit to show you, but if I type nano test dot text it will show me look there's an empty text file there it doesn't have anything in it so that's creating a file if you want to get rid of that file when you're done with it type in rm for remove space test dot text and that will remove exactly that file now doing an rm from the terminal doesn't actually take it to your trash like it would if you were in nautilus or if you were in uh, whatever other file browser you prefer to use this actually takes it straight to the completely gone area it's lost forever although with some recovery you could get it back in theory. But now that I've done the RM test, if I do the LS again, if I list the directory again, you'll notice test.txt is no longer there. Now the same thing can be said for creating a directory. If I wanted to create a directory here and call it test, I can do mkdir space test and then do an LS again to list the directory. Here we have the test directory that was just created. I can change directory to get into it. You see we are in the test directory as a subdirectory of the home now. If I type in touch test.txt in here, this is not the same file as we saw earlier. It's actually a completely new test text file. Print the directory. We are in home jk0 test and we have test.txt in there. And much in the same way as we did before, I go back to the home directory by cd dot dot to go back up. And then to remove this one, it is slightly different. To remove a directory, you have to actually do rm space dash rf. That says go recursively and force it to delete everything underneath it. Now, if anyone ever tells you to do this command at the root level of the system, don't do it. That's a very bad idea. Basically, if you do an rm dash rf with the correct permissions, you will wipe out everything on your system, and that's a very bad thing to do. If you don't do it with the right permissions, it will still go through and wipe out everything in your home directory, which is a really bad thing to do. So just don't do it unless you're 100% certain what you're doing. Now in this case, rm-rf test is going to take the test directory itself and all of the contents underneath it and delete it. So you see there I hit rm-rf test and then if I do an ls now, the test directory is no longer there. So if I try to cd to it, if I try to change directory to test, no such file or directory. One more thing I should probably mention is copying and renaming files. What you can actually do is copy one file from a location to another. If you're familiar with the graphical explorers, you're able to right click on it, go to copy, right click somewhere else, go to paste. Well, in this case, instead of doing all that, you just do CP space, whatever the file is. Uh, in this case, we'll do startup, irssi.sh, and we will put that in our public folder. So public. So I did CP, the file name, and then where I want it to go. Now you can do that more in depth if you want to. If you want to put it in somebody else's home directory, you can type in instead of public slash home slash username slash whatever. You can do slash etc slash whatever. Uh, you have to make sure you have permissions on the directory you're going to, but that's a little bit further than we really want to go today. So if I want to just put this in my public directory, I hit cp startup irs.sh public. 
Now if I cd change directory over to public, I can do an ls, a list the directory, and there we go, startup irssi has actually been copied over there. Now if I go back up a level and then list the directory again, there's startup irssi, didn't actually move it, it just copied it. Now if I actually wanted to move it, I can move it either within the directory from one file name to another, that's how you rename things in Linux terminal, or I can move it from one directory to another directory and actually rename it during the move. So for example, if I wanted to move the altitude.desktop file, I could do a mv for move altitude.desktop public slash altitude dot test. And then if we do an ls real quick, you'll notice that altitude.desktop is no longer in this folder. If I go into the public directory by doing a change directory to public, list the contents, there is altitude.test. It's the same file, it's got a slightly different name, and it's been moved from one place to another. I know that's very quick, I know there's not a whole lot of detail being given here, and I hope that this was somewhat helpful to you, but that's where we're going to stop for this time. Make sure to come back next time. Next Monday I'll be doing another intro to the terminal video. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.